Hello and welcome to this Follow the Wire video for our OEM customers and partners. In this session, we're going to discuss a technology in fiber channel storage area networks called Virtual Machine ID. Server virtualization can be found in just about every data center, big and small. Central to server virtualization is the need for shared storage to support the data storage needs for all the virtual machines that are deployed. Using shared storage SANs is, with virtual server clusters improves workload mobility and provides secure, high availability access to the associated data stores. Now, when storage performance issues arise, one challenge with this virtualized approach is identifying which workloads are impacting the overall performance. Switch management software can be used to identify where the bottlenecks are occurring in the SAN, but they can't identify the workflow causing the issue. Today, the typical approach to addressing storage performance issues is to start migrating VMs from one physical server to another in hopes that moving the workloads will alleviate the congestion and resolve the issue. This is not only time consuming and potentially error prone, but it isn't a fact-based approach to diagnosing the issue. Lots of guessing going on with this approach. What if the server and storage administrators could view storage flows and identify the virtual machine generating them? That is what a new capability of the Fiber Channel SAN is, and we call it Virtual Machine ID. When virtual servers are connected to a SAN today, things typically work very well. But when issues arise, they can be difficult to diagnose. In the SAN, all you can monitor is the overall traffic, and it's very difficult to identify what traffic is being generated by what VM or workload. Server admins usually start attacking this issue by migrating VMs between servers. Again, this is very time consuming and can simply move the problem from one system to another. What if we could identify which fiber channel frames and flows are being generated by which VMs? This would definitely help identify which VM is using the majority of the bandwidth. In this example on this slide, we see that the red VM is creating the most traffic. If we have visibility at the VM level for each fiber channel flow, we can reroute the traffic for the high volume workload to a different path and free up the other paths uh, up for the remaining workloads. In our example here, the red VM is creating most of the traffic, so the best approach would be to create a new path for that traffic so that the traffic for the green, blue, and orange VMs is no longer impacted. But how do we get this kind of visibility? The solution is called Virtual Machine ID. With Virtual Machine ID or VMID, each fiber channel frame is tagged by the HPA with the information about the VM that generated the request. The information is passed to and through the fiber channel switches to the target storage device. Now, storage management and switch management software can be updated to view the traffic flow using this VM information and display the traffic flow on a per VM basis. Today, QLogic, Emulax, HPAs, Brocade, and Cisco fiber channel switches and directors as well as NetApp Storage support VMID end-to-end. -end. Pure Storage will be supporting this very soon. Well, what about the other Tier 1 storage players? Well, VMID isn't high on their list of priorities as of yet, and storage vendors are notoriously slow at adopting new capabilities. So how do we take advantage of the benefits of VMID when using storage devices that don't support it end-to-end? That is where tagless VMID comes into play. With the tagless approach, the fiber channel switches strip off the VM information before sending them to the storage array, presenting a standard fiber channel frame that any storage array can support. In this approach, the VM info is still available on all the traffic from the host to the switch, and this allows for visibility to the inbound traffic. Data flows between the switch and the target storage are just standard fiber channel frames. Now, while not as robust as an end-to-end -end, uh, VMID approach, this approach does give VM administrators a high level of visibility that they never had previously. What happens when a VM is migrated with this approach? Well, the VM moves from one server to another, and the HPA in that server continues to tag the fiber channel frames with the VMID. The switch sees this and can continue to monitor the traffic from the server to the switch. VMID and tagless VMID enable system administrators using VMware to segment SAN traffic for specific VM workloads end-to-end. -end. 
Both are supported by QLogic, HBAs, and VMware today, and for Fiber Channel SCSI-based systems. VMID is supported by Brocade and Cisco Switches today, as well as with Tagless VMID support coming in the very near future, uh, as well as FC and VME support. For planned support timelines from switch vendors, uh, contact them directly. So here are the key takeaways from this video. VMID allows for SAN traffic visibility at the individual VM level today. Tagless VMID provides a visibility even with no support for VMID by the storage vendors. And the Marvell QLogic Fiber Channel HPAs support VMID and Tagless VMID with both major fiber channel switch vendors today. Well, that's it for this video. For more information, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic to find out details about Marvell and QLogic Fiber Channel technology. And be sure to check out our other Follow the Wire videos on the Marvell YouTube channel. Thanks for your time and your attention, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.